So I'll hand over to Terence. Terence, you'll discover, is a man of few words. He doesn't say much. <laughs> yeah, okay, I had to lie somewhere. So Terence, Terence Timmett, he's our hosting principal um, here at Montevideo Primary. So Terence, enjoy. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's lovely to be here. Uh, lovely to be at home. <laughs> It is good to be at home. I think it's the first time in, in the history of this hall that I've got a hat on. So uh, I'm feeling slightly uncomfortable though, I must also add. <laughs> but otherwise, it's okay. Professor Jansen, it's so nice to have you here. When you last spoke at Old Mutual, I really enjoyed it. And seeing you here tonight makes it even more special. You are in the home of wisdom. The, um, can, can we start with our slide? By the way, I've got half of the staff here also tonight operational, so that is great. Um, pity that Steve isn't here because Steve is, uh, was quite instrumental in what we really set about and want to achieve. I started quite late. Um, I only got into the program, I think, in August. Um, so Steve and I had to firstly set out our, our parameters where we are going to work and from from the outset I said Steve if there's one thing I can tell you that I'm so used to working on my own so it is difficult to work with somebody from outside because the people whom I'm working along with they know how we work but we will tag along and we will see where we get and uh, I think we were clearly defined in terms of assistance and where we are going and what we want to achieve. But our common goal was that we have, um, we have done quite a lot of things together and we had to identify a common thing that we really want to do. And the one thing that we have, that we wanted to do, uh, by the way, Mike, I must, I must link with what you are saying and that is the second, the third paragraph. Steve was quite fascinated with the manner school operated and asked many questions about curriculum management and the business approach of management to improve the school's existing structures. And our first conversation, Steve is a sports person. He is busy with a boxing um, competition tonight. And I'm by heart also a sports person. So we could identify certain things and the one thing that you know is we speak of model C schools, X model C schools and whatever schools, and maybe there's model D schools also. <laughs> but we are not a model C school, model D or whatever, we're a progressive school. We want to do things and what we have achieved so far is this group momentum that we've been busy with all the time. So in our first conversation about the possibility of upgrading the school sports field, I expressed the desire to play soccer matches at school. The learners, educators and parents would simply love playing under 9 and under 13 soccer matches at school. Now I always tell my school governing body chairs, as he's also here tonight, one must firstly see the picture in your head. And once you see the picture in your head, you work towards fulfilling that picture. And we are in the process of fulfilling that particular picture now. However, we realized that this would be a major and cost-intensive exercise which would require careful planning and serious fundraising. Uh, next slide. The, uh, there you see the Honourable over there when we had the hall. Now, l let me take you through a few things that we did. Uh, we needed to change our parking area because the increasing number of learners. Uh, so what we did, we achieved that in 2011. So if you come from the front side, you won't come in by the old parking area, the new one which had been developed in 2011. And then in 2014, our goal had been to provide the school an early childhood development centre. This dream was achieved in 2014. And then during 2015, the school achieved something which we did not believe we could do, the completion of its own school hall. Well, you are sitting in the hall tonight. So give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so these are the things that we could as a team, you know, they say there's no I in team, but there has to be a driver some way. So in, uh, in the team, team, uh, uh, um, 
since we could do all these things. The, the development of the school sports field grew naturally since we don't have a place where we can play soccer on a competitive basis and prepare for our athletics. If we could achieve this, it would bring a new dynamic to the school. Our children would be able to play with other schools on home turf. That would be fantastic. Next one. The school governing body had been focusing on this aspect for a long time. What happened to my pictures, Grisley? Where are my pictures? I'm looking for my pictures. There we go. Yeah, right, right. Now, I need, my pictures are important because you need to see what my field looks like. <laughs> There's my field. Okay, the, uh, it says condition of the field currently. We as a primary school have been blessed with a clean record over, 29, pretty, over the past 29 years. We turned 29 on the 22nd of July. We have never been challenged or faced with a situation of teen pregnancy. Our parents in the first place and educators secondly are working hard, hand in glove, to educate our learners in life orientation and during, the, and during daily school. You, you see for yourself the condition of our field. It looks terrible. Our discipline systems are in place and is in progress of being improved upon by revisiting the code of conduct. The parental and learner input is critical to the success of effective applications since we are in the changing South African society. Next slide. The parents, obviously. The parents need to be involved with fundraising and other means of support since the upgrading of the field will be benefiting their children. We have been embarking on this already during the winter holiday break. Uh, the parent fundraising committee had flexed their muscles by organizing their first fundraising event. The broader community is included in the school program to support the efforts made by the school to be vigilant with regards to safety measures at school. And the damage to the sports field over many years have left a mark and would require a huge amount of money to fix it. Now there was supposed to be another picture, but let's get on to the next one. The school was, has built up the necessary infrastructure over the past 15 years, which enables it to move forward on this one too. We have installed a groundwater system which would help us to manage the field watering system on the field, uh, on the land effectively. The school has received a donation of 20 upgrade systems with a server from a neighboring high school, which, is, which has in return received a brand new CAT lab laboratory. This helped us to upgrade our systems and can now implement mathematics programs such as green shoes as well as chemistry maths. The intention is to grow from a good school to an excellent one. The, uh, I, I, I am missing those pictures with goes underneath. I don't know what happened to my pictures. And now let me, let me conclude because I, don't, I, I want to stay true to what Mike said. I've got little, I, I don't say much. <laughs> the school in the, loca in the location of Montevideo Primary is located where we will always have challenges. The social issues of the varying communities which frequent, which frequent the school, burglaries at the school, as well as high unemployment amongst the parent community seems to increase every year. Montevideo Primary will always have a shortage of funding for all the plans we have. But we have learned to take projects one day at a time and will continue to do so. Our ideal will be to have our own clubhouse as well as a, as a developed and playable sports field. Now, what I did was I went to a school which has those facilities. And I took the pictures, on the left hand side, you'll see the clubhouse. And on the right hand side, you see the field. And that is what we endeavor to have when we are concluded with this project. That's it.